Hello, everyone. Linda Israel here. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed and like this video, please do so. And when we're done, go down into the comment section and tell me what you liked about today's video. In my last little tutorial video, I showed on this side of the page how I added these embellishments. So I thought I would just flip this over and I've got another side of the page and I grabbed a few papers. So my thought was, let's make a little notepad that can kind of go over the page and be used to journal upon. So I've got here a piece of cardstock and what I did basically, let me get my ruler, is I cut it to be five and a quarter inches wide and it is 11 inches tall. Then I scored it at eight and a quarter inches. And my thought was this could then slip over the page here and you would have writing space on either side. So what I need to do right now is really burnish this fold so that it will lay flat and I have some stacks of paper here that I thought would look good. So my thought was I have some Tattered Angels dyed paper that I made a while back. If I line this all up in layers, this is a piece of sheet music that I cut down and I've just kind of made them different sizes. I happen to have this pretty mulberry paper and I thought that would be pretty in a layer. And then this was a mop-up page that I made a while back and I thought that would be pretty right here. So my thought was, as I would get all of these nice and neat and stacked together and grab a paper clip, which I need to find. I got a couple of paper clips here. And I'll paper clip this a little bit away from the top, like so. And that's going to be on this side. And then on this side, I would make a similar stack to the stack that's on the other side. So this time I have another piece of that blue paper, another piece of music. I have a piece of lilac paper that's in the musical Botanica kit. So I'm just going to line that up. I've got another page that I cut up from that other side. And then I had this piece of a photocopy of a gel print or a digital copy of my gel print that I made a while back. And I thought I would line these up across the top here, trying to get them as close as I can. And again, I would paper clip these all together a little bit away from the edge and then I had a piece of lace here where'd it go I just had it and I thought if I glued this piece of lace right across the top here and then I could stitch over that so I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to add a little bit of Fabri-Tac so that this will be adhered down and won't shift on me too much I'm going to allow that to dry for just a moment, set that aside. And then I found, this is one of those little tear-off notepad papers, and it says uh, Brother Sister Design Studios. And I thought it would look really pretty on this page, but I want to add a little bit of color to the background. So I'm getting a scrap of paper to put here so I can cover up that lace. Let me get another scrap of paper. And since I used the picked or seedless preserves earlier, I'm going to get that out again. My thought was, I'll just kind of go around the edge. All right, so there is that piece. And I don't really necessarily want it to permanently cover up the music behind because you may want to put a photo there. You may want to glue this down completely. So I thought, well, what if I used a piece of washi tape? So my thought was, I'm going to turn it this way, line it up, and then find the end. I like to turn things towards me a little better so I can see it. And we'll put it kind of at the top a little bit. Make sure that I don't have it too far. Okay, there we go. So right about there. 
And I'll just put a little strip of washi tape on that piece of paper. Cut off the excess. Burnish that down. If your washi tape is old and it doesn't seem to stick, then put a bead of glue across the page and that will make it stick a lot better. Make sure I've got it right side up. Okay. So this will then flip up like that. And I had this little area here that I thought, well, I need some kind of decoration for it. And I happen to have a piece of fabric. And my thought was, what if I go to the sewing machine and stitch around the word journal? It's one of my rubber stamps that I stamped out. And then I'll glue this on here. And then you have a little tab to flip that up. Does that sound fair? So I'm going to use a little bit of glue to put down the middle and stick that on top here. And now I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and stitch upon this in a moment, but I want to do one more thing to see if I need the stitches. I have these tickets and I was noticing that I had a little trumpet. So my thought was, what if I tore the ticket apart? And generally you would keep this coupon and maybe you didn't win the raffle, but if we put that over the top of it, and it may be difficult to see with the glare, but I thought that might look kind of cute. So I'm going to add some distress inks to this piece. And then let's see how this looks. I don't know. I thought that would be kind of clever. So I think I'll just glue it down like it is onto the page. And then we'll sew the fabric piece and the notepad and then finalize any embellishments we decide to use. Oh yeah, I like the way that looks across the top there. All right, so let's take our fabric bit and our little notepad over to the sewing machine. I've mentioned this in other videos. I have a regular sewing machine. I have it set up to do zigzag stitch. I have black thread in my upper and my lower. I use a regular sewing needle. The key to sewing is to not sew over anything wet, especially glue. It will kind of gum up your machine. If you keep your machine clean, you will not have problems sewing on your sewing machine. Some people ask me about issues that they had. A lot of the major issues that people have with their sewing machine is they don't have it threaded correctly. They don't spin their bobbin correctly. There's a right way and a wrong way to add thread to your bobbin and then putting your bobbin in correctly. So if you don't know on your machine, do a search on the internet to see if you can find the manual or possibly even a tutorial. If you're lucky to be near a sewing machine service and repair shop, take your machine up to them and ask them to show you how. And you may have to pay a little bit of a service fee, but honestly, I think it's worth it, 25, 50 bucks, to have somebody show you how to use your machine because once you start using it, you'll love it and you'll use it a lot. All right, so I'm gonna stitch around this. I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch, and since I'm not trying to lock it into place, it's not a garment, it's not going to have any wear and tear on it, I'm just going to stitch, I'm not back stitching. When I get to the end, I leave my needle down, and then raise the pressure foot, and then swing around my project, and then continue sewing. So that little embellishment is made. Alright, so now all I'm going to do is, I know where the fold is on my little notepad. So I'm just going to line up my presser foot so it goes right down that center and then just stitch across. And then I'll rotate it around and then stitch down the other side. Let's see, you can see the stitches are across the top there. All right, let's remove the paper clips. All right, so now we have this little notepad of papers that we can use on our journal. And we've got this little embellishment that I thought would look good right here in this corner. So I'm gonna use a little bit of glue and go across here. That way I can position this where I want it.
and it doesn't look like it would flip up, but it does. Isn't that kind of cool? While we've got that flipped up, I know I have some little sticker flowers, which were relatively flat, and I like this purple one, so I think I'm going to grab that one. And my thought was just kind of put it down here, and then I've got a butterfly, so let's let's grab a butterfly. We could do it where it's coming off of that, or we could put it up high. I think where it's kind of hovering over the flower would be good. I'm trying to put them back in there. These were stickers that I got off of Amazon. I have a link in the description box if you're wondering. I think it was like 300 and some odd stickers. There's like 40 of each, yeah, 40 of each kind. And I just think they're kind of fun to play with. All right, let's peel the backer off. So here's what I'm going to do. Take my glasses and I've got a straight needle and I'm just going to position that needle between the acetate backing and the sticker and then I'll place it on my page. And then let's do this piece. Same thing. I think kind of coming right there off of it. And you could add more journaling space on there if you've got maybe, I was just going to see if I had, oh, if I, if I had another one of these little tear off pages or little pieces of paper, you can put that on there. I think I'm going to leave it for the person that gets this journal finally, or maybe me later on when I use it. All right. So that's going to go there on this little side. This is from the musical Botanica kit. And I think that's not, it's not an oboe because it doesn't have the mouthpiece. I don't know which instrument that is. In instrument that is, can't get my words out, but I know that's an orchid, but I thought that would look kind of pretty right there. So I'm gonna glue that down. And then I have the heartbeat melodies that I thought would look good across the bottom here. And I thought I would flip this up. And I know that we have this paper and this paper, but I thought, what if we put maybe right here in the corner. Should we washi tape it so you can flip it up or just glue it down? I think I'm just gonna glue it with a little bit of glue right here. So it can be removed if you want, just be gentle. And then we have this page, which I think I wanna stamp on. So let me get my rubber stamps. Maybe this one right here. So let me get my border block. I don't know, maybe I'll stamp it at the top and the bottom. I'll do it at the bottom first. Let's see how it looks. Remember when you're stamping, just press straight down. Don't rock your stamp and let it rest on the paper for a moment so that ink can transfer. I think that looks good just down there at the bottom. And then we have this back piece. How about a sentiment? If we put a sentiment on there, let's put uh, music heals the soul. And I haven't used this stamp yet, so I'm going to stamp it off onto a scrap of paper. And I think I'm going to put it right here in the corner. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so that's this side. So put that away. Let's flip this over. I didn't find anything right off the bat to put on front of here. So let me look to see if there's something... I had this journal card that I made a while back and then this little paper doily. And my thought was just to layer these just for some interest. And then you'll have the back side that you can write upon. And that just kind of gives us a little something of color, pop of fun. I don't need the whole doily. So what I'm gonna do is fold it in half and then cut it in half. And maybe a little distress ink on the edges. Okay, let's glue this down, and then I'll glue this right over the top of it. It's a piece of cardstock weight, but I think it would be good to have on here. How about when you see a chance, take it. Maybe we'll put that right across there, which is a, a song lyric. <laughs> I use my scraps of paper and stamp on those little strips whenever I cut papers apart. Okay, I like that. And then this would flip over. We can kind of help it a little bit. Then we have this page. I don't think I put much on the others. Let's do something on this page though. I still have the 
little wavy music. So I'm going to stamp that. Make sure I've got it right side up across the bottom here. That looks pretty good. And then flip this up. I'll leave this one. We won't put anything on it. But this one will. Let's stamp something on it. How about. I happen to have the Ulysses butterfly on my palette here. So I'm just going to grab it and then stamp it in the corner. And then this is kind of the back side. I didn't put anything on this piece because I figured you can write on it if you want. So let's add, let's add this guy kind of coming from the corner. I learned my lesson. I put it further over. And let's grab maybe, let's grab a sticker. That'll look good right there. All right, let's see if I can do this without my glasses. I probably can't. Nope, I can't see it. <laughs> I have to have my second pair of glasses. I like that. So now we have this little notepad that can slip over the page. Now, if it seems to be moving too much, we can put a paper clip on it. So I'm thinking maybe we'll put a paper clip going like that. So let's add, oh, you know what? I've got a little piece of this lace here. I've got another little piece of lace. Let's do this. I will feed it through the closed end of the paper clip and fold it up. I don't need it to be really long, so I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and then just stitch right across there. Now the key is to not stitch onto the paper clip. Make sure that you're away from the paper clip because <laughs> you'll break a needle. That's not too bad. So now this piece will fit over the page and it won't flop around. All right. Well, that's another little tutorial that I thought I would share with you. We've got this page that I decorated and it flips up so you can write on the back and then you have this little notepad of just random papers. You know, look at your stash, see what you already have that you can use and just stack them together. You can write on most of them. And if you can't, you can always add another piece of paper glued on top of here or a photograph or maybe some ephemera that you have that you want to remember. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Of course, comment what was your favorite part of this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And let's see, what else? Come back to see me on the live streams. I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Check the description box for links for the products that I use if you're interested in those. And thank you so very much for watching. Have a fabulous day and do something creative. Bye, everybody.